There's a new movie out called Straight Outta Compton. It's a biopic, a fictitious recreation of events that took place in the late 1980s in a neighborhood of Los Angeles when a few young black males, YBM, banded together to form a musical group called Niggas With Attitudes, NWA. They released a 12-track tape, later a CD, called What Else? Straight Outta Compton. It was a thunderbolt of a recording, a sensation in several ways. The language was deliberately offensive, and the violent references were blatant and unapologetic, to say the least. Many, if not all, radio stations refused to play the music, and it is said that the FBI wrote a letter to the group advising them that their lyrics were not in the best interests of the law, or officers of that law, or their own personal security. It is said that that letter is now the property of the Rock and Roll Museum, preserved like any other sacred text. And that may or may not be true, but it demonstrates that the NWA became legends, while the FBI are just a stiff bunch of stupid shits in suits. The album sold something like 10 million copies. It was more than just a huge hit. It was a blueprint, a guide, to an entire way of life. It told you how to dress, drop a new name on yourself, what was true and what was bullshit, and consequently how to behave. All of that is tightly packaged in the group's name, NWA, Niggas With Attitudes, the transformation of YBM into NWA. The NWA knew their audience, and they knew what their audience wanted to hear, and they said it loud and they said it clear, in a famous hook, fuck the police, fuck the police, fuck the police, and you could drive around with that blasting away, an anthem, and if anyone stopped you, you could say, hey, I'm just listening to my tunes, is that a crime? The first three songs on the album were the major lightning strike. I want to consider the third one, that declaration, fuck the police. It's performed as a courtroom trial, the defendants being this time around in an artistic reversal, the police. I don't have the slightest doubt that in the late 1980s, the police in Compton and Los Angeles in general were having the time of their lives with added relish with young black males stopping them for no reason other than why dogs lick themselves because they can. Telling them to shut the fuck up, sit down on that curb while we search your car, and if you so much as fart, you stupid motherfucker, I'll blow your fucking head off. That kind of thing. Day after day, night after night. In the song, the YBM become NWA, and they fight back. They don't take none of that shit no more. Because if you take that gun and badge away from that asshole, what have you got? A redneck, white bread, chicken shit motherfucker. And they find him guilty as charged. This is in the tradition and spirit of Emerson, who wrote in Self-Reliance, I am ashamed to think how easily we capitulate to badges and names, to large societies and dead institutions. The NWA is done with that capitulation, motherfucker. I am not one of those who thinks music makes people kill themselves or shoot up their school. But I do think that this song, Fuck the Police, is an exact prescription for what is happening in these 21st century times, over and over. Police stopping a YBM, the YBM resisting this violation of his person, of his rights, sometimes trying to take the badge and the weapon, and the YBM getting shot. Because the YVM is now an NWA, who doesn't have to take that shit. And in the real world, on the streets, that doesn't mean you're hip, or rolling over the cops. Much more like, that means you're participating in your own destruction. NWA's music was called gangster rap. Someone called them studio gangsters. One of them, who called himself Easy e didn't have it so easy. He died of AIDS. Two others were O'Shea Jackson, B.K.A. Ice Cube, and Andre Young, Dr. Dre. They did, in fact, get straight out of Compton. 
Cube went into movies, Boys in the Hood, The Fridays, and The Barbershops, massaging and softening his image into a more acceptable mainstream mush. Dre became a producer, and then he came out with a line of headphones, The Beats, and he hooked up with Hewlett Packard and Apple and some car companies, and he is well on his way to his first billion. So they are way, way, way out of Compton, and they are the guiding lights behind the movie, a big hit, which will make their stars shine brighter and bring them even more money and fame. But out in the streets, we have their loyal subjects, the MWAs, and the despised, thoroughly mistrusted cops, in a series of ongoing, volatile, fatal confrontations. The same scenario, scripted by the song, and it's no legend, just the partial result of it. Call it collateral damage. <laughs>